why you can't defend yourself with a walking cane and what you can do instead, what does work with a walking cane, how you can defend yourself. The first thing that you have to understand about the cane is that you're gonna see spinning, no matter whether it's a martial arts based cane, it's just plain self-defense cane, cane foo, any type of American cane systems, you're gonna see a lot of spinning. And the purpose of the spinning varies and depends on the style and the instructor and what you're learning. A lot of times you're gonna see spinning used as a way to create a self-defense barrier to force someone to stay back, to keep them at bay. You might be seeing this spinning in your training and start to think of it in a way that you would use this and it would be really effective for self-defense and it's not, it's simply not. Self-defense spinning with the cane, cane spinning, no matter what your style of cane combat, cane spinning is going to improve a lot of things and make you much better at cane self-defense. It is not going to be used in the application onto someone's face or body. You're not going to hit them with the spins. You're not going to do the spinning and be able to keep someone back. We pressure test this all the time in classes. Having someone spinning the cane that might be the lighter cane, we'll use the uh, rattan canes and put some pads on and then just close the distance really fast. And what happens is that cane bounces off and the person holding the cane either loses it or it gets stuck against their body and the person attacking just smashes their face. What does work instead is taking a standing position, a simple position and thrusting straight in. Anytime you get in this position and you go forward in through the center line, immediate, direct and explosive, you're gonna be very effective with cane self-defense techniques that actually work. So spinning is the one reason that a lot of people cannot effectively defend themselves with walking cane because they're spinning for the wrong reason. Now I'm a big advocate. I wanna teach you how to spin. I want you to spin in your training and I want you to learn why you're spinning. And it's some simple reasons. You're gonna get a lot of callus on your hand that allows you to slide the cane through your hand better. You're going to develop better fitness when you do this cane spinning across your body, whether you're standing or you might be stuck in a wheelchair or put in a stuck is probably the wrong word, right? You might be uh, constrained to a seating position, sitting at the edge of the bed, or you don't, you're not as mobile as you used to be. You have to spin in order to engage the core muscles. You're going to bring your heart rate up. You're going to lean your body out faster. The spinning is going to be very useful and important in your cross training because it builds strength in your hands. It's going to build a good situational, or not situational awareness, but timing and distance. Awareness of how the cane moves through space and time, your proprioception. All these things are gonna be improved with cane spinning or combat cane spinning. However, you're not going to be using the spin itself as a means of defense against a serious attacker, somebody who really either has a weapon or they really mean to do you harm or multiple attackers, the worst thing you can do is start to spin, thinking that that is going to be like a blade on an airplane. Nobody wants to walk into that. It's not the same thing. It's not going to, um, it's not gonna stop somebody the way you think it is. Yeah, body awareness, Garen says. Hello, Matthew, it's good to see you. Uh, Matthew, I was thinking of you. Matthew works with a cane, one hand for, um, keep himself upright and mobile to move around with. He walks with the cane. The other hand, he's got the cane that he uses for self-defense. That's another perfect application of the spin. Holding one cane, working on your balance, working on your coordination, being able to move, and the other cane, that's gonna improve your overall fitness. However, if you now have to get into a defensive position, it's better to just stand and wait. And immediately, as soon as the threat is determined, because you have situation where as soon as you know you have to defend yourself, then commit to that thrust through the eyes, the nose, the throat, the face, anything that is softer than the tip of your cane. If you can go in and strike with even just a little bit of force, and you don't need a lot because the wood against the nose, the face, the throat, the solar plexus, the groin, the part between the belly button and the privates coming straight in, that's going to do uh, the damage is going to start to create distance between you and the attack. The, after that, you can bring it into your shoulder and come forward with a hard strike. 
striking this way is much more powerful because you have a better grip than you would on the cane spin. If you're spinning like this, it's a good way to lose your cane, to run into something, and you can practice. You can see how much that bounces back and comes toward me because I have to have my hand more relaxed when I do the spin. If instead I'm holding like this, I can then turn my shoulders and hips, my body, I can keep it in a straight line between me and the threat and strike with a lot of force, doing a lot of damage using the hard piece of this hickory cane. Now, if you need a great self-defense cane, you can't beat Cane Masters, that's the first link below. Even, and if you wanna use any other cane, just go to the Cane Masters website and get the dimensions and see what it is that works for you. You're gonna find that these are not that expensive, especially this cane. All right, now, the second reason why you can't defend yourself with a walking cane, and what I want you to do instead is that your techniques are too complex, they're too complicated. You might be working on twisting and turns and motions where you're going to wait for them to punch and as they punch, you're gonna sidestep and parry and slide it up in between their arm and over the shoulder and take them down or you're going to step to the side and parry and block and knock their hand away and then reach in with the other hand and grab and twist down and you're spending all of your time practicing these techniques that do work when you're in a controlled environment, when there's not a lot of pressure. When we talk about pressure testing, I'm talking about someone really coming in, putting a little bit of gear on, take a lighter cane like that rattan cane, or they make these padded canes you can buy, and then see if it works. Let, the guy, let someone like me come at you to smash you in the face and try to do the parry and the block and the stuff and the takedowns and all the twists and turns of the hop keto cane, which is again, good techniques. I believe in the hop keto cane techniques. I believe in cane foo. I believe in American cane masters. I believe in everything that you see that will work. However, I don't believe that it's adequate for most people, especially beginners who are learning how to defend themselves with a cane and wanna have an immediate effectiveness with cane self-defense. So here's what I want you to do instead. I want you to adopt the principle of immediate direct explosive that could be right into his groin that could be into your other hand thrusting into his uh this thin fascia of metal that keeps your guts in or not metal muscle right you're just sticking it right through there just like a law enforcement a police officer in riot gear next to all of the other police officers there's a bunch of uh thugs coming against the police line rioters or whatever they're not gonna do anything fancy. They're not gonna be trying to block. They're not gonna parry. They're gonna stick people on the ground as fast as humanly possible. That's what I want you to think of. Be immediate, direct, and explosive. Keep it simple. The reason why you cannot defend yourself with a cane is you might be practicing techniques that require great timing and distance, great understanding of balance, great coordination with your body, good, um, T understanding of technique, memorizing complex techniques, which are all fun. That's all great in the realm and the world of the esoteric and the aesthetic and the martial arts. Learn that and keep it simple. When it comes to self-defense, make a separation in your mind. This is what I do for self-defense. This is the fun stuff that I'm learning for my martial arts. And understand that you can do both and both, are, both have a lot of value, right? There's nothing wrong with learning the martial arts, the ancient martial arts, the beauty, the, the style. It's martial arts, it has those two words for a reason. It's martial means fighting, means war, and art, because it's artistic and there's, there's aesthetics and there's all kinds of angles and, and principles and processes and different types of combinations that you can do with your body that's kind of like a choreography, like a beautiful dance, like a ballet. That's not self-defense. Self-defense is self-defense. Self-defense is get it in the other hand, stick it so hard through his body that he wants to puke up his lunch and he doesn't, he can't reach you with his knife, right? Self-defense is stick it in, lift this hand a little bit and go up into the neck. Fights over, you win for good. You know, he pulls out that knife, he pulls out the weapon. You're not messing around. You don't want to wait for him to come at you with the knife and sidestep and smash and leech in and put him on the ground and then put your knee on him and wait for the police to show up. In the movies, that works really, really well. However, on the street, when we do this in the, in the dojo, when we do the, we're using the dojo training cane from Cane Masters, we get this cane and we put the padding on 
And even with the pad, you don't want to use the hard hickory and the oak canes unless you work with somebody who's got some good common sense and good self-control because these will go right through those pads and still break an arm. So we get out the rattan cane and then you start speeding on each other. It's kind of like a collie or an escrima stick. And it doesn't always work the way you expect it to. <coughs> Excuse me, that's why we have to do it that way. But what always works when you have an older person, you have somebody who's not as agile or fit or has some uh, physical limitations, what works for them always is standing the ground and pushing through the center line with these thrusting strikes. These side steps, that has to be timed really well. Some of these moves, they have to be timed pretty well too. Even if you come through the shoulder, that's more effective. I like these strikes better than this kind of a strike coming off of the shoulder. Come from here and you're gonna hit harder. But what really works is just directly in and then if you can step in at the same, same time, you take all of the weight of your body and you concentrate it and stick it right through there. Make sure you have a good grip with two hands and drive in through the other side of their body. I like to imagine that I'm trying to reach in and to feel their soul with the tip of my stick as I go through their body for self-defense. And that's how I want you to practice. Keep it super simple. The reason why most people cannot defend themselves with a cane is they are learning these uh, kung fu based hop keto, which is just another word for jujitsu, jujitsu, uh, small circle, circle based techniques that again, do work really, really well. If you have somebody who's feeding you the right kind of punch, it's just like collie sticks, just like fighting with knives. Uh, it looks really, really good. As long as they're following, <laughs> they're coming at you at the right angles, right? You get somebody in there who's a little hyper, a little whatever, or, or doesn't believe in it, doesn't want to drink the Kool-Aid, and they start coming at you for real, or they have some real experience with it, it all falls apart. And this is what a lot of people won't tell you. But um, it's, just, it's just a fact of life. That's in the, but I want to tell you this, because I want you to be safe. I don't want you to drink the Kool-Aid. I'm not selling any Kool-Aid. I'm not going to drink it. I don't want you to drink it. Don't just believe that every technique works because the guy doing it can do it so well and he can, you know, get the little stuff going or, you know, the, all the hot keto stuff or the Aikido stuff, all that stuff, again, works really well in a controlled environment. Stress test it, put somebody in there who really means to hurt you or at least put you on your heels so that you have to make sure it works and it doesn't work half the time when you're doing all of this twisting and turning and trying to slide it in. And I know maybe you haven't seen it before, but if you watch enough of these videos from other instructors, not criticizing any other instructors, by the way, because we all do the same thing, but it just isn't practical, it doesn't work. And it does, it works in the right environment. You know, I can take it, I can twist it, I can get it behind your back, you can throw a kick, I can block it, I block it this way, hook it up to your leg, I can twist you, put you on the ground, and that doesn't mean that those techniques never work. That just means that you have to do it over and over and over and over again. You have to have impeccable timing. You have to be in fantastic shape. If you're using a cane for mobility, that might not be true for you. You might be moving in that direction. You'll become physically stronger, better, better timing. But in the meantime, learn how to snatch it up between his legs, get it in the other hand, go through the center of his body, bring it to your shoulder, strike, cross this temple, pull it into your chest, blast them through the face, and then use that big nasty tooth to rip some of the skin straight off of his face. I just realized that's way back there. I want you to see this just a little bit closer, right? The first one is just a turn of the wrist. This is what I want you to do instead. You cannot defend yourself with a walking cane if it's too complex. If it's all based on twists and turns and side steps, and fancy dancy moves. Again, that doesn't mean don't learn it. Learn that for sure. If that's something that interests you, learn it. You'll be better no matter what. When it comes to real life, life or death, he's got a gun, he's got a knife. If he's got a gun, you're in trouble. If he's got a knife, you're in trouble. But let's say there's two or three of them. No matter what, you'd rather have something than nothing, right? Snatch that up between his legs. That's your first motion. Just practice that. 
And you don't have to have a bag to hit. Practice it in the air. Practice over and over. Get really good at that. This is a simple move. You can get really good at this in a short period of time. Number two, get it in the other hand. Hit him, put it in the other hand. Get it in that hand, hand, hand. Now you've got this stick between you and him. Thrust, thrust, thrust. It's right here. He's got to get around this to touch me now. I'm not going to try to sidestep or anything else. I'm going to push, push. And depending on where I put my hand, I can keep this low for this part and go a little bit higher, hit him in the solar plexus. All I'm doing, see, it's this front hand that comes up and down. That's, just, that's what aims it. This hand is just a pivot point. This hand is the pivot point. I can bring it up, stick it through the face. As long as I keep my hands close to my body, no matter how much stronger he is, I'm going to be stronger because I'm going to let the wood, the hickory, the oak do the job on this cane master self-defense cane. I just step in and thrust. Once I've closed the gap, I'm not going to be done until the fight's over and I go home safe. He might have another weapon. He might have a knife. He might have something he's trying to hurt me with. There might be multiple attackers. I have to address him, get him out of the way, and go on to the next. Bring this into your shoulder and turn. See how I'm doing this with my shoulders and hips? This hard piece of wood against his temple, his jaw, his ear, his neck, it's either going to knock him out or it's going to at least stun him enough that it's going to stop his attack. You stop his forward motion, stop his attack. From here, pull it to your chest, and then just think about what this is. It's like you're doing push-ups. This hard bar of hard oak, right? Or hickory, whatever yours is made out of. Just into his teeth, into his nose, into his eyes, into his jaw, into his neck, into his chest. You're just thrusting straight in. From here, I have this big tooth. There's only one reason for the tooth. Well, there's more than one reason. One, it, it's functional for, fit, or for, um, for mobility. But after that, for self-defense, it's designed to rake, right? Skin, flesh, muscle, gristle, bone, teeth, right out of their mouth, whatever you want to call it. And you're already in this position. You just hit him here to stop him. It's self-defense. And then rake, rake. That's the next motion. One, two. So you're here. You pop it up here push and down. Andre says, yes, the intention is to pass through him. Reach through the other side into his, into his past. There's a saying, people who are depressed all the time live in the past. People who are nervous and anxious all the time live in the future. People who have peace and are constantly chill and relaxed, they live in the now. You want to live in the now, but you want to reach through to his former self. Literally, stick it through and through his spine, through his, his back, his throat for self-defense. In the fight as fast as you can. And that's just super simple techniques. So the reason that a lot of people cannot use a cane for self-defense is they make it too complex, they learn complex things, and they get frustrated, and if they continue to train, they get better, and they get better, and they get better, and they get better, but they're never stress tested, they're never pressure tested. No one is ever coming at them with a bunch of gear on and, and trying to take their cane away from them and smack them a couple times and teach them a lesson. If, if that's you, change. Do what works. Do this instead. Learn how to keep it simple. Stick it in his groin. Stick it in his midsection, right? Stick it right through his solar plexus. Stick it in the throat. Stick it in the face. Smash him right into the temple. Go into the neck. Go into that upper arm. Go into a rib. Break a leg. Pull it in. Blast right through the middle. From here, rake. Rip something off of his body or his face. The police will be able to identify him because he's missing half of the side of his face. His eye came off. His nose came for self-defense. It's pretty gruesome. But that's the kind of stuff that works because it's practical and it's simple. You have to ask yourself, do you, do you want to learn theory <laughs> or principles? Do you want to learn techniques that are fancy and super cool or principles? Principles of self-defense will save your life. Techniques will get you hurt or killed. Principles are things like situational awareness. Pay attention. Number two, get into a better position. Put the stick between you and the threat. Look at all that distance I just created between the two of us. Number three, ask yourself, what targets can I remove or destroy for self-defense? His eyesight, his ability to see me or breathe temporarily or permanently, his ability to hear or stand up straight, his ability to have his balance because I just boxed him in the ears or smashed his ear in 
or smash them in the neck, for, all for self-defense. Those are the principles of self-defense. And then finally, close with and destroy, violence of action. Take everything into the end of your cane and smash, smash, smash. Right, so Matthew says he wants to keep it simple, yet practical. That's all this is about. It works. Cane self-defense is extremely effective. It's my favorite self-defense tool because you can take it everywhere you go because the Americans with Disabilities Act says you can take it anywhere. It's a mobility device. And even this, this Cane Master self-defense cane, if you go to the link below, you'll see at the end of this, one of these canes, there's all kinds of different canes there, but you'll see this basic, basic cane, which is about 40 bucks. I'm not sure what the current price is. It's, if you check the link, it's in there. But there's also... Oh, and, and, and the Carex canes, I keep selling a lot of these Carex canes. Carex, you know, that's the one you get like at CVS or you get it on Amazon. It's like 10 bucks, but they break so easily. I stopped selling them because of that. One of these costs as much as four of the cheap canes, but you're going to break four canes in the first three months that you have one of these. You'll have one of these for about four years before it ever uses it, loses its usefulness. So uh, how many, how many, Garbage canes is that? How many carrots canes is that? I don't know. You're spending a hundred, couple hundred bucks just to save 40 bucks. So bite the bullet. If you're serious about cane self-defense, get a Cane Masters cane. You can't get a better cane than the Cane Masters cane. First link below. But also on there, there's a card that tells you those two laws. It words it for you. So you don't have to come up with your own words. You just pull it out of your wallet or your purse. And it says, look, I'm allowed to carry this because the Americans Disability Act. You're not allowed to question me on my right to carry it because of my privacy of, of health information, my health information privacy act, the HIPAA act, HIPAA laws or whatever. But that's all in there. And again, don't take my word for it. Go to the first link below, read it for yourself, and then either buy the car, just copy it down, stick it in your wallet, and then you're golden. You guys have been awesome. I gotta go teach a private lesson for two hours. I'll see you in a little bit.